thank you very much for the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk today about um, a series of tests we performed in the parabolic flight campaign last year um, regarding the characterization of hopper flow um, of lunar regular stimulants um, in reduced gravity, so under mass gravity and lunar gravity, um, and vacuum conditions to create a most original environment for the experiments. So the scope um, was to investigate the flowability, um, as I said before, and the background for these experiments is that wherever you have sampling instruments on rovers or landers um, on Mars or on Moon or asteroids, um, there's a the problem how to transfer the sample from the collection um, instrument, which is a shovel or a drill or whatever, um, to an analysis device. And um, in most cases, this happens via guiding systems such as um, hoppers. So that's why we looked into the feed hoppers in particular. So um, what kind of parameters um, does such a system have? Um, we're talking about two-dimensional slotted uh, hoppers, so um, we can forget about the depth. Uh, we didn't change that. But most rele relevant for a design for a hopper design is the inclination angle and the outlet width. Of course, there are several other parameters that influence the um, flow of sample material um, through this system. Um, we didn't look into all of them. Um, I want to focus on the following ones. First of all, the sample material. Um, we investigated JC1A, which is a lunar Mare simulant, and um, another simulant that simulates the um, lunar highland regions. Um, our sample mass was ranging between 27 to 46 grams, which is um, a rather small mass, so uh, not comparable to, uh, let's say, ICU applications, um, but specifically for um, scientific analysis instruments. Um, regarding the ambient pressure, we didn't reach um, a vacuum that is comparable to moon. Uh, we have ultra-high vacuum on the moon. Um, but we were able to um, obtain pressures in the range of um, 10 to minus 2 to several uh, millibars. Um, we tested the hopper flow under terrestrial conditions, 1G, and then also under Mars G and Lunar G. Um, if you're looking at the inclination angles, um, we investigated different angles from 55 to 75 degrees um, in combination with different outlet widths, um, taking 8, 13 and 18 millimeters so that we could um, simulate designs um, like used on the ExoMars um, analysis device um, so that the results are comparable to those applications. And we um, looked at symmetrical uh, hoppers, so with the same inclination angles on both sides, but we also looked into asymmetrical configurations. Um, the other parameters, um, which are in italics here, um, we didn't change, uh, we didn't further investigate them. Um, it's, it's certain that there is an influence on the, hop on, on the flow of, of a sample through a hopper by pre-consolidation of the material, the electrostatic charge, we just heard it, um, moisture, wall friction, um, and of course you can play with vibration loads. Um, again, we didn't change, we didn't vary these parameters. So um, I want to show you the setup. We had um, those hoppers designed in um, an hourglass kind of design. Um, we have um, different inclinations on the top funnel and on the lower funnel, but the same outlet width. Um, and in total, um, we had 24 different hopper configurations. You see some asymmetrical ones here on the right. Uh, what we did was we placed three of those containers in a vacuum chamber. Um, and uh, we placed this vacuum chamber in a rack. You see that's mounted on a, um, on a horizontal axis, so you could, um, you could rotate the whole assembly. And it's evacuated, you see the manual valve on the top. Um, and this uh, experiment rack um, was an 
integrate into the aircraft. So, um, summing it up, <coughs> we had 24 different hopper configurations, two different lunar regular simulants. Um, we flew a total of 124 parabolas, um, including um, four flight days with 13 Mars G, 12 Moon G, and 6 Zero G parabolas per flight day. Of course, for these particular experiments, we couldn't use the Zero G parabolas because nothing would flow. Um, and we were able to repeat the experiments two to nine times um, during each parabola with durations of 20 to 30 seconds. Um, then in total we had about just over a thousand measurements. Um, let's see if these are working. Looks a bit strange. So. Uh, maybe I can show you these fields in another way. Yep, the stick should be there. So. Just a second. There it is. So, yeah. Um, what you see now is the same hopper, the same simulant, but different levels of gravity. I wanted to focus on the left one. Um, the left hopper you see here, an example of a really nice and smooth <coughs> mass flow. So that was under mass gravity. If we further reduce the gravity, um, you see the same hopper on the left. Um, you see it's much more slower, it's much more discontinuous. Um, there's arching, um, but finally the whole material um, falls through the hopper. Um, but what also can happen sometimes, and um, rather randomly, is something like that. Lunar gravity, same configuration, and nothing flows at all. So, that was kind of interesting. I'm going to show these ones. Okay, so um, several observations we had during the flight. Um, what, we could, what we could see prior to flight in our laboratory experiments was that um, if you don't evacuate the, um, the containers, you have gas inclusions um, in the porous media. So um, these gas inclusions slow the material flow and they cause blocking sometimes. So that was the reason why we evacuated the containers. Uh, what you also see is material sticking on the vertical walls and on the inclined walls. Um, so that might be due to electrostatic charge, uh, might be due to residual moisture or just the cohesive forces of the material itself. Um, what you also can see is that the material volume expands at a lower gravity. Of course the compaction is being reduced while reducing the gravity. Um, but we didn't anticipate this problem um, to have such a large effect. Um, so what you see here is that the, the lower funnel would um, would be um, filled over the the actual um, targeted volume. Um, what else happened is that we had random occurrence of arching and clogging. You just saw that. Um, the, in some cases, the material flow lasted longer than one entire parabola. Um, which is about 26 seconds, so that would be a really slow material flow. So coming to the results and finally to the conclusions, um, what we could see is um, that the flow rate seems to be directly proportional to gravity. Um, I want to show you a really highly uh, simplified graph here. Uh, what you can see is while reducing the gravity from 1g to a third, um, the flow rate is decreased about the same factor. Um, and when reducing the, gra the, um, the gravity even further to one-sixth of a G, um, you see um, the fit is much, even much better, um, so the flow rate gets reduced by the same rate again. 
Another dependency we um, realized was that the flow rate is proportional to the outlet size of the hopper. You see the same graph here. If you enlarge the outlet width from 8 to 13 millimeters by a factor of about 1.6, the flow rate is um, increased by the same factor. And um, taking those two um, conclusions, you can say that for a constant flow rate under reduced gravity, you would have to proportionally enlarge the outlet size, which is interesting for laboratory experiments. Um, then we saw arching and clogging um, effects randomly. We saw that uh, higher inclinations of the funnel tend to lead to higher flow rates, which was not always the case, um, especially for the, the highest inclination angles. Um, those didn't follow that trend. Uh, we saw good repeatability and high flow rates for the uh, medium configurations with um, medium inclination angles and, the sl and the small um, outlet widths. And uh, finally, we saw best repeatability and moderate flow rates, um, so what you would aim for, um, for the asymmetrical configurations, which was quite interesting as well. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for your attention. I'm happy to answer your questions. Yeah, definitely. We are currently investigating that, but um, I mean that's common practice. If you don't know that, or if the material or how it would flow, you just exert vibration to be sure. That's by the way also what we are implementing uh, in the design of the system for ExoMars. We have a CO2 electric vibrator attached to the hopper. One more question. Like with rounded particles. Yeah, we would have done that, but um, we just um, tried to get the most out of the experiments and do it with the simulants. Um, but um, we can do experiments with reference material and then also validate um, simulations, for instance. Yeah. But we didn't do that in that particular case. Thanks again. Good. Thanks.